guys how's everybody doing happy wednesday god bless everyone i want to come on guys so we can get into our final day of ruth i really sometimes wish ruth was longer but it's only you know four chapters and um we're going to conclude it today with chapters three and four i'm gonna try my best to read all of this in this video so i don't have to upload two and um, just a quick overview, if you missed day one, you can go back and check it out. But basically what we talked about, um, we talked about Naomi's departure from Israel and her return. We talked about Naomi and Ruth. Um, we talked about Ruth meets Boaz. They actually um, met and Ruth's welcome and some other things. We also went over the full outline of contents. Like today, we're going to continue on in Ruth's welcome and Boaz and Ruth. Um, and we went over the introduction. But today, what we're going to be talking about... And we are going to pray, and I did pray for you guys this morning. Uh, what I heard for this morning, for which I prayed over you guys, is to put on the full armor of God. I also um, spoke Psalms 91 over you guys and some other blessings um, this early this morning before I even got up and got justice ready for school. Like I said, every day I'm praying for you guys, like literally every single day. So, um, yeah, I already prayed for you guys. But we're going to pray for to open up the Bible study. So, let's get into that, and then I'll tell you what will be coming from today. Heavenly Father, good morning again, Lord. Thank you for blessing each and every one of us as we're coming on, getting deeper into your word and getting deeper into you, God. We bless you. We thank you. Thank you for clearing paths and making ways. Thank you for breakthroughs on today, miracles, signs and wonders, blessings, God, protection, divine um, justification and vengeance, answer prayers, God. Even some that you're not answering some prayers, God, because you have better and you have more and you see certain things down the line. But just thank you for touching um, each and every one of us today all the believers all around the world even those that will be saved thank you for touching every area of our lives our families and god just bless our time in you bless and strengthen us all in you god in jesus mighty name we pray amen so guys ruth chapter three we're going to be talking about um we're going to be talking about ruth and boaz at the threshing floor let me see which one this is Oh, yeah, I like that one, too. So, Ruth and Boaz at the threshing floor. So, hopefully, you guys want me in your Bibles to Ruth chapter 3. I'm about to, um, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why it's so cold and then it's been raining off and on this morning. Not really, like, too bad of rain. I'm about to get Justice's little cover. Because my little cover at the house, he's trying to take that from me. I'm like, uh-uh, you have one. So, I keep this in the car, you know, just in case we ride in, you know, his little snacks and his little cover and stuff. And I keep my covers in the in the house, but I think I'm going to start bringing my cover and keep it in the car, too. So, Ruth and Boaz at the threshing floor has about 18 verses. Let's get into this, guys. So, Ruth and Boaz at the restaurant. Yeah. So, one day, Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, my daughter, should I not try to find a home or, hold on one second, guys. Okay, sorry about that. So a home, which means find rest in Hebrew, and it says, see Ruth 1.9, which we read yesterday. So she said, um, this is Naomi speaking to, um, to Ruth. Um, my daughter, should I not try to find a home for you where you will be well provided for? Is not Boaz with whose servant girls you have been a kinsman of ours? Remember yesterday we talked about kinsman redeemer. Tonight, he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Because remember, going back to um, chapter 1, like the end of chapter 1, um, the barley harvest was beginning. Right? The barley harvest was beginning. So, he's going to be, tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash and perfume yourself. See, we talked about wisdom yesterday. Connecting with wisdom. The wise walks among the wise and all those things. And Naomi has been blessing her. With wisdom and the crazy thing is i have my ac all the way down and it's still cold because i keep it cold and it's still I, I like it much colder than this but i don't know if it's the rain outside or what so i'm sorry guys so wash and perfume yourself and put on your best clothes so she like girl fancy up dress up get you know dolled up wash up put on some perfume smell good put on your best clothes right for your next level you got to take it up a notch. That's a word for someone. For your next level, 
you have to take it up a notch and it may not necessarily be physically um you taking it up a notch but it's going to be in a certain area where god is calling you to he's going to require certain things that you do he's going to require you to believe him for certain things and then he's going to call you to do certain things amen so so yeah, so then she said, then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking, right? When he lies down, note the place or basically take note, observe the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. Now, Naomi is a little bit older. She didn't been married. She didn't raise sons. She didn't have kids. She know what it is to be around Orpha and Ruth, you know, and be a part of their lives and they be a part of her life. So she knows what she's talking about. And that's a word for someone. No matter how old you are, never think you know everything. That's a dangerous place to be in. Paul said we go from faith to faith, level to level and glory to glory. Right. There's always another level. If you wise, there's always more wisdom. Right. Even in school, there's levels to school, right? You know, there's always another level. There's always another season. Don't feel like because just because you know everything or you settled or you got some experience and wisdom that you don't have to listen to people of wisdom. Especially when God bless people bless like bless um people to, to meet you in your life and they speak wisdom unto you. I mean, that's from God. Wisdom comes from God. So Naomi is telling her and she's telling her specifics what to do. So that means this lady know what she's talking about. She know how this work because if Ruth knew how it worked, then why would Naomi have to tell her that or talk to her about this? Somebody think about what I'm saying. Have you ever tried to talk to someone? You saw something that maybe they didn't see or you're just giving them this suggestion or your wisdom to spare them from going through a certain experience just in your own life. Or you see where they listen and they had a different outcome or they didn't listen. And then they're like, man, I wish I had listened. And some of them be stubborn and prideful. They won't admit that they was wrong. But deep down within their own heart, they know they should have listened. You know, and it's, you're trying, you're not trying to seem like you know everything, like you high and mighty and like you just know everything, but you're trying to help them. I'm trying to help you. You know what I mean? It's what you would say to them. So it's good to take heed to wise counsel. And we read about that when we did our Proverbs series. In the, like wise counsel and wisdom is a blessing. Knowledge is a blessing. Understanding is a blessing. The book of James says, if a person don't have wisdom... Yeah, I got to go to the gas station after this. Because what I got to do after this, I got to go to the gas station. Then I got to work on some, a few, like a project for a few hours. Then I got to come back, go to the library, do my homework. And then I go pick up justice from school. But yeah, I'm looking at the time. I'm good on time. Guys, don't, sometimes I'm just, but what I was saying, guys, was this. And sorry about that, guys. Sometimes my, my mornings and my mind just, yeah. But what I'm saying is wisdom. The book of James says if a person lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives um, freely and generously to all. You know, so um, let's keep going. So, OK, she told her what to do. So here's the blessing of because you, you know what I'm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, this makes sense now. Let's say, because in verse 5, Ruth says, I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. But what if in verse 5, Ruth, and I'm not taking anything out of context. I'm just trying to get you guys to see the, when you make a foolish decision and when you make a wise decision. We all know what it is to make foolish decisions and wise decisions. But if you know what it is to do better and you choose to constantly make foolish decisions and you think you're going to reap a different outcome. You know, what's that famous quote? Um, insanity. Is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. If you're doing something that's not working, the proof is in the pudding. You got to check the root of that. You got to check if you want a different outcome. So let's say Ruth would have just blocked what Naomi said and blocked her wisdom. She would have missed out on being married to Boaz and being in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. She would have missed out on her destiny and purpose. She would have missed out. And that's the thing, like, stop blocking people and blocking things because it don't look like how you want it to look or it don't sound. No, you got to, if it's from God and God is giving that to you, this is a word for someone. Don't block yourself or others or your own purpose and blessing because you so caught up and gung-ho and caught up on how you view it, your will, your perception. Because think about it. 
Not saying your perception is wrong and not saying it's right. But your perception is not the only way to look at it. So if I'm facing right now, what am I facing? If I'm facing northbound, that does not mean that I'm facing the wrong direction. That does not mean that what I'm seeing facing northbound is, is wrong. I see buildings. I see cars. I'm parked across the street from um, one of the courthouses. In this, I'm in another city where my son go to school. So there's a courthouse across the street. Then there's the library. Then there's these buildings. Then there's homes. And there's other businesses around here. I, this is what I see. This is in my view. But that doesn't take away from the fact that there is an east view. That there's a west view. Somebody catch what I'm saying. That there is a south view. So sometimes it's not saying your view is wrong. But you have to be able to look at it from another point of view. And for for those that maybe you have kids or daughters or grandkids or friends or your sisters your, your or family members or your best friends or your cousins or maybe your sisters or brothers in Christ or whom, whomever. And you try to talk to them and give them knowledge and wisdom from God or even things you went through and they don't want to hear it. There's only so much you can do. You have to be at peace with that. Because sometimes we can want things more for other people than they want for themselves. And sometimes it can hurt because you see them kind of going through unnecessarily. But at the end of the day, it's going to have to be up to that person to want better. To, to want it, right? So, let's jump back into this so that we can close. So, I would do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So, she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. And that's the great thing with God, like we talked about in those videos with Ezekiel chapter 1. If you missed those videos or you didn't get a chance to read Ezekiel chapter 1, I encourage you today, carve out three, four minutes or less. It's not even that long, really, to read Ezekiel chapter 1 and how... Mm -mm, get out this. I don't know how you even got in here. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Read, carve that time out to read Ezekiel chapter 1. Right? And, and how those living beings and those living creatures were in sync with each other. How God was telling us that it's important for us to be in sync with him. Move when he say move. You know, go when he says go. Stop when he say stop. So it's important to do what God has need of you to do. Because when he asks you about it, he's not going to ask you why you didn't do it. Tom or Gary or Harry or Susan or Sam or Elizabeth or Laziah asked you to do. He's going to say, what did you do with what I told you to do? He's not going to ask you about the other opinions of people. He's going to say, well, what did you do with what I gave you? With the mission and the purpose that I told you to do. So, daughter, he's going to ask you that. And you're going to have to give an account. We talked about this multiple times on the videos with the talents, the meanness, are you using your God-given gifts, perfect your crafts, all those different videos. So let's um, close, guys. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, see, so he's feeling nice. He's feeling right. You know what good spirits is, right? He went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile because he wasn't just drinking water. I'm not saying he wasn't drinking water, but he wasn't just drinking water. If he didn't finish and drinking, it's the barley harvest. It's time of celebration. It's time for reaping. People are celebrating. People are happy because they're getting ready to get their harvest. And that's a word for someone. You need to be celebrating. God is going to bless you with your harvest, but keep doing what God calls you to do. Okay. So he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly. So she's humble. She not ratchet. She not, she has some, um, what's the word, the, the old, um, she has a grace about herself. She has some class. She has some elegance. Okay. Right. So Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet and lay down. Okay. So, you know, I'm not married yet. There's a lot I could say with that. But I'm not going to get into that story because that's a, a story. There's some stories I have never told y'all one day I, I made. But I will be married one day. But I'm glad I didn't get married that time when I was about to. Thank you, Lord. But that's a word for someone that is. Or maybe you will be. You When you move and do what God has called you to do, you have to approach certain situations a certain way. Going back to what we talked about before. And we talked about this before as well. The north, the south, the east, the west. There is different viewpoints. Right? There's different ways to look at things. And it's not saying that it's right or wrong. But there is always a different way to look at things. And not saying that your way is right or wrong again. 
But that doesn't mean that that is the only concrete set in stone way. If you feel like it's your way all the time and it's your perception all the time and you're not open and adaptable to other viewpoints that are in line with God, whether you understand or not, you will miss out on a lot of things in your life because you are limiting yourself. You think you being blessed and you got these aha light bulbs going off, but if you are limited and you're not growing in wisdom and you're not listening to God and you're not open to the move of God and the spirit of God and the word of God, how are you going to grow? That's like you got a whole, just, just a practical example. That's like you got a whole house available to you. But you so accustomed and used to just one room of the house, you think you got it all. But really, there are other rooms in the house for you to explore. There are other things in that house that is available to you and for your benefit. But because you're so limited in this space of where you are, you're not going to be able to go out and enjoy. You even got an outside deck, patio. Let's say you got a pool or nature or wherever. Not a lot of beautiful scenic things around you. You won't even be able to enjoy that because you're so stuck in that place. But if you open yourself to wisdom and you open yourself, different doors will open for you spiritually and mentally, emotionally, your soul, even in your physical world, different doors will open, even your relationships, even socially speaking, different things will open up to you because you're free to leave from that room and go in, in, in different areas of the house. All right. So it's on 16 minutes. Yeah. All right, I guess that sounds different. So, all right, so let's close with this. I know I keep saying let's close. I'm saying that to myself so I can finish up. Okay, so, um, okay, so she, she went there, right? So in the middle of the night, something startled the man. And he turned and discovered a woman lying at his feet. So she's not a girl. This is a woman. And, of course, they're going to say a woman, but this is her lying there. So who are you, he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me since you are a kinsman redeemer. The power of words at the right time. Excuse me. There's a scripture in the Bible that says like a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a platter, in a silver platter, something like that. But basically, basically it's saying, if I said it wrong, I'm sorry because it's not in front of me, but Holy Spirit is just reminding me of that. But basically the right word speaking, spoken at the right time is a blessing. It's a value. Because if you got some gold apples in the silver something, that's rich. And it's at the right time, that's perfect. So, okay, so she's telling him, yeah, so then 10, the Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied, this kindness it's greater than what you show earlier. See, because earlier she didn't have this knowledge and this wisdom. But she didn't talk with Naomi. So she got the game. And it's not really a game. Different people in different places of the world have different jargon, right? She has, she have the tools. She got the jewels. She got the gem. She got the knowledge. She got the wisdom. She, she got the, the play, right? On what to do. See, she didn't have that earlier. But now she got it. Because he said, this kindness is greater than, than that which you showed earlier. And a quick word for someone before we just conclude this. Don't despise the seasons and levels in your life. Because Ruth had to glean in the fields and do the hard work and be there for Naomi and choose to leave the old behind. She could have went back and married someone else. She could have stayed with Orpha and worshipped him. God, she could have stayed with she was familiar with. She chose to come into the unknown. Just like Abraham called, was called out and came into the unknown. But God called him out. Ruth made the decision. See, sometimes it won't be that you called out. You have to choose within your own self to make that decision. Because you're going to go after your destiny. Every step in every season and every area of your life matters every level. I'm constantly encouraged with that on a daily basis. You know, Zechariah 4, 6 through 10, that's one of my favorite scriptures. We talked about that before. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. It talks about some other things, but God will grow that. Right? Little is much when it's in the hands of God because Ruth choosing to make up her mind to leave, not follow behind Orpha, not stay and say, okay, it was comfortable and convenient. I'm going to stay here, you know, by Naomi. I love you too. Goodbye. She chose to come with her. She made a vow. There's power in words. Then not only did she make the, the vow, she acted on it. She put faith with action. When we talked about that, the Bible says it too. Faith without works is dead. You got to have faith, but then you got to have some action behind that faith. 
so that they can coincide together you know and she made the decision to do what she needed to do you know and she got here she was there for naomi she gleaned she stayed in the right field she was connected she listened to naomi now is at this point so every just like joseph y'all know i love joseph joseph okay that pit and none of that was what he originally wanted who wants to lose a husband and leave a familiar land and leave familiar gods and all these different things to come into the new thing I'm not saying that you don't want that, but it takes some great faith and it takes something great in you to want a new beginning when you didn't lost pretty much everything. And when you could have retreated and went back, but you choose to keep going forward and believe God for the new thing. Sometimes even if you just have that and it feel like you don't have enough, that's more than enough. Because if you have God, you really have all that you need because he have all that you need. Anything outside of him is different, but when you inside of him and you in him, that's different too. See what I'm saying? All right, so um, every season matters. Just like we talked about with the baby. Just like we talked about with the garden, the seed, the flowers. Just like we talked about with Joseph, the pit, the Potiphar's house, the prison. It all equaled up to the palace. Everything that he did on those levels equaled up to the next level. Everything that you do when you're in kindergarten, when you're in elementary school, when you go to middle school, when you go to high school, when you go to college, when you go to, you know, all those other universities and all that stuff, it's, it's always levels to it. And everything you do on that prior level gonna get you to your next level. Whatever you don't do is gonna either hinder you and keep you back, or it's gonna make you feel stuck. But there is another level. You gotta look at this for every area of your life. Okay? So all right, so he said this kindness is greater than that which you show earlier. You have not run after the younger man, rather rich or poor. So Boaz is a little bit more older than Ruth for him to say that to her. He's not as young, you know, but you gotta go with what God has for you. Is a word for someone. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. Here's the connection. More deeper, the connection. All my fellow townsmen know that you are a woman of noble character. Just like we were talking about Proverbs 31 yesterday. Well, briefly, we didn't read it because we read that before. But she has a lot of those Proverbs 31 characteristics. Wouldn't you agree? So verse 12, continuing on to 18. Although it is true that I'm near of kin, there is a kinsman redeemer nearer than I. Now, I'm really not going to break this down. Um, thank you, Lord. I'm really not going to break this down because we read this before. And we talked about this before, I think, on the prayer line. And we did some videos on Ruth before. So I'm not going to really get into depth and break it down. I'm just going to keep reading so we can get into um, four. Yeah, because there's a, there, which means he is next in line, but it's someone ahead of him. So that means if that man ahead of him wants to marry Ruth, because the thing about it, when you when you marry, you're going to get everything that comes with that. You're going to get the whatever inheritance or allotment comes with that in her. You can't take one without the other. You understand? So everything, it's like a package deal. It's like a joint package deal. Okay? So there's someone ahead of him, which means if this man say, I want to marry her, he has to marry Ruth. And then Boaz would just be out. And then if something happened between them, then that's different. And you know, back then we talked about the laws and all that. So it was a little bit different than how it is now. But basically he wasn't, he was next, but he wasn't next, next. It was a man in front of him. So he's telling her this, right? And that's another great word. As you do what God tell you to do, even if you don't know it, because you were faithful to do what God told you to do, he will reveal it to you. He will make it known to you. Just like the scripture in the Bible, this doesn't have nothing to do with this, so I'm not taking nothing out of context. But there's a scripture in the Bible that says God won't do anything unless he, unless he first reveals it to his servants, the prophets. He will, he will reveal it. There's another scripture, um, God will give them secret treasures in hidden places. Like he will, it's not in front of me, so I, let me just keep going. So, 23 minutes okay so yeah he said that so stay here for the night and in the morning if he wants to redeem good let him redeem he like you know if he want to you know that's fine but but if he is not willing as surely as the lord lives i will do it so he like if he wanted fine you know i'm not stepping on his toes but if he don't want it i'm gonna take it i'll claim you i'll you know we're gonna do this so lie here until morning so he's allowing her to rest. He don't want her to, to worry. He's assuring her. I will show you what kind of person he is. More and more of what he is because we read about him yesterday. So she led his feet into mourning but got up before anyone could be recognized using wisdom. Wisdom. Somebody listening to me. That verse 14. Use wisdom. 
And he said, don't let it be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. Basically, keep this between you and I. Even though Naomi and the Lord knew. But this, this don't need to be, our business don't need to be with everybody. That's wisdom too. Everybody don't need to be in your business because everyone is not going to be happy for you. There will be some people that's going to be happy for you, but there's going to be some people that's not happy for you. What you think they would have been speaking and saying and releasing in the atmosphere if they would have saw her and him together or her there? Use wisdom. Come on. So 15 through 18. I'm sorry, guys. Sometimes I get excited with this Bible with doing this with you guys, but it's true. You have to use wisdom, man. In some situations. Everybody not supposed to, you know, we just did a video talking about spiritual laundry. So he also said, bring me the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley and put it on her. Then he went back to town. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, how did it go, my daughter? So she like, you know, what's the tea? Like, what's up? What happened? You know, what's the news? How? What happened? You know? So then she told her everything Boaz had done for her and added, he gave me these six measures of barley saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed, which means not only am I fit and able to take care of you, I could take care of Naomi. A man that honors, you could say honors family. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to get you and we just going to push her to the side. No, I got you and I got her. Amen. That says a lot about him because, again, he's a man of standing. So 26 minutes, let me hurry up and read this. So then Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens. For the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Boaz is about to marry Ruth. Let's do um, verse 1 through 22 quickly. And I don't mean to rush, but y'all know this is going to just cut off for me in 31 minutes. So meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate and sat there. Um, the town gate is very symbolic. We've talked about it before. Um, if you don't know what it is, I would say maybe Google it or look in your Bible and look up what the town gate represents. And he sat there, right? So when the kinsman redeemer he had mentioned came along, so this guy who was in front of him, he, he's here now. He came along. Boaz said, because he sat there, because he waiting, because he know, like, he finna come here. Or he know, like, I'm finna meet you. He had mentioned, came along, boy said, come over, and I don't know if this man's name, I don't know if it's going to mention, I don't remember because I haven't read Ruth in a very long time, but anyway, the man came, or whatever. So, boy said, come over here, my friend, come on, friend, and sit down, which really that is his friend, but the wisdom, we're using wisdom, okay? So, he went over and sat down, so, like, it's no hostility, it's kindness, you're my friend, come on, because we need to have this talk, you know, we need to meet. You know, so so he went over and sat down. Boaz took ten of the elders of the town. That's important. Elders represented wisdom and counsel and all that. And sometimes, like, ju not judges, because judges was different. We kind of read judges a little bit. I I, I don't want to keep explaining. Yeah, let's just keep reading, guys, because I don't want to take away from us concluding this. Boaz took 10 of the elders of the town and said, sit here, and they did so. So it's not just him talking to this man. We got 10 elders, and we're going to, and sometimes that's safe to do because there is, um, there's wise counsel in numbers, right? The Bible says that, I think, in Proverbs. So then he said to the kids of Redeemer, Naomi, to this down to the business now, Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling the piece of land that belonged to our brother Elimelech. Because remember, he's part of Elimelech family. But well, both of them is if they have the the kinsman redeemer. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of the seated here and in the presence of the elders of my people, because it's not going to be because it says on the mouth of two or more witnesses, let it be established. So it's him and this man and these ten elders. It's not that he just bring these ten elders for sure. This is wisdom because this is being witnessed in front of them, right? So seated here in the presence of the elders of my people, if you will redeem it, do so. He like, if you're going to do it, do so. But if you will not, tell me so I will know. He like, let me know, you know, what you want to do, you know, for no one has the right to do it except you and I'm next in line. So he like, if you're going to do it, do it. But if you don't, I'm next in line and I'm going to do it. So he's giving him a choice. I will redeem it. Listen. I will redeem it, he said, because he this is this land. You know what land represents back then in this Bible? Even if you get land today, there's so much you can do with land. Land is very symbolic. Land could represent establishment and wealth and residual income, depending on how you want to do it. So he's like, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, on the day you buy the land from Naomi and from Ruth the Moabitess, you acquire the dead man's widow. So not only are you going to get the land, you're going to have to marry her to get it because it's a package deal. 
in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. So at this, so the man like, hold on, I ain't know about all that. Because at, at this, that's at this, six, the kids redeemer said, then I cannot redeem it because I might endanger my own estate. He like, no, I'll get the land, but I don't know about marrying her. He like, no, I can't do that because I endanger my own thing. What I have going on, my own estate. You redeem it yourself. He like, you do it. And that was nobody but God anyway, if you really think about it. He said, I cannot do it. So let's quickly close this on 30 minutes. Now, in earlier times in Israel, for the redemption and transfer of property to become final, one party took off his sandal. It wasn't like how it is today. They took off their sandal and gave it to the other. This was the method of legalizing transactions in Israel. So the kinsman redeemer said to Boaz, buy it yourself, and he removed his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all the people, Today you are witnesses that I have brought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Melon. And guys, whatever I don't finish, I'm going to have to just put in the description box today because I don't have the time to do um, two videos today. I'm sorry. I got to get on the road. Um, but I'll just put the rest in the description box. And hopefully you guys just continue on with reading. So... Okay, so the kinsman redeemer said to Boaz, buy it yourself, and he removed his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all the people, Today you are witnesses that I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Melon. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabitess, Melon's widow, as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property, so that his name will not disappear from among his family or from the town records. Today you are witnesses! Exclamation mark. Then the elders and all those at the gate, said we are witnesses may the lord make the woman who was coming into your home like rachel and leah who together built up the house of israel and it was very symbolic with the words and guys i will continue on the genealogy in the um description box but may you have standing in effort that and be famous in bethlehem so they're blessing him they're blessing her through the offspring the lord gives you by this young woman children May your family and lineage, may your family be like that of Perez, whom Tamar born to Judah. And we're going to do verses 13 through 22 in the footnotes, which is the genealogy of David and Boaz took Ruth to be his wife.